My name is Vahid Chitsos, part of Elite Mastermind Group. Thank you for being here this morning. Go ahead and introduce yourself to everybody. Let us know where you're tuning in from. My name is Eric Castellanos. I'm the founder of Amazon Lit, and I'm tuning in right now from New Jersey. Awesome, awesome. So listen, I got some questions. I've been, I've been looking at your profile for a minute. I see that you're putting a lot of e-commerce and a lot of different content out there. Here's my question for you. Let's take it back to the basics. If someone <laughs> wants to just become an entrepreneur, I know it's just scary sometimes for us to have that, you know, leap of, of, of getting out of our comfort zone. How did you do it? Yeah, so I can totally 100% agree with that. It's, it's really main focus is getting out of that comfort zone, doing things that make you uncomfortable because it's not easy being an entrepreneur, especially in the first couple years. You know, you'll be lucky if you start turning a profit in the first year or two, you know, everything get, has to get reinvested back into the business. So like really changing your mentality and changing your mindset and really how you operate, because like the way I was trained to operate for decades is completely different than the entrepreneur, entrepreneurial mindset. So it's, it's so, like, a so give us two, two of those big differences that you felt. Because I know everybody's going through change, and normally if you don't like change, change brings growth, and a little bit uncertainty brings a little bit of a fear. But what were a couple of things, because the way we did business in the past, completely different than what we do today. Yes, absolutely. So fear of failure, you know, like getting through that, that failure, like knowing that, like if I fail, it's not the end of the world, you know, but like it's tough sometimes to understand that because I have all these grandiose ideas in my head all the time, you know, and I'm like taking all these risks as an entrepreneur, you take daily risks, calculated risks. So it's challenging sometimes to just be like, okay, if I fail, like it's okay. It's like, I can continue to move forward. I can continue to progress. It's not the end of the world. I just got to get back on my feet and keep powerhousing through. So during that process, what kept you going? What were some of the methods for self-development that you felt it helped you to get, you know, because sometimes when they go through that, they got the tile lane and they're like, listen, I'm not going to do it anymore. This is a sign from a higher power that I should not be doing this. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's funny you say higher power because my first thing I was going to say is prayer, prayer meditation. You know, like before I leave the house in the morning, I wake up, I pray, I meditate, I get my mind centered with my spirit and I'm just aligned and ready to take on the day. And then as far as a networking space, I definitely communicate my ideas and bounce my ideas off of other people, other successful people who know what it's like to be an entrepreneur in the early onset stages of building a business because it's challenging. But when I get to pull from their experience, it's really a game changer. And, and, and give us a tip. Like, what is it that you don't like when you get on your DM? Because I know there's a lot of gurus out there, and I know you get this all the time, where people try to reach out to you, get knowledge, wisdom, and possibly do collaboration. What are some of the messages that you don't like? You're like, this is not how you would approach it. Yeah, so one of my most hated messages is like, what's your profit? You know, like, and what's, your, what's your net profit? You know, and I, I just respond, I'm like, I'm a privately owned, we're a privately owned company. You know, we're, we're obviously operating a healthy company because we have all these employees, we're turning revenue, um, but like, it's just not something we share. It's almost like asking a woman her, her age. It's just, it's a no-no, you just don't do it. Like, would you walk into your local bodega or corner store and, and, you know, go buy a candy bar and be like, oh, by the way, what's your net profits in this place? Like, absolutely not. So why is that okay in social media, you know? What I hate is when people say hi or hello, and I'm like, what yeah. am I supposed to do with you? Is there a question? Is there a yeah. comment? Is there a collaboration? Like, what is? What do you mean, hello? Like, what is yeah. that? Like, I I appreciate that you know, I appreciate that you're being polite, saying hi, but that you just took 20 minutes of me looking at this message. I'm like thinking. I'm like, what am I supposed to? Do? I don't know your mode. Like, you got to give me a little bit more than that. Just yeah. that I'm gonna cut it. A hundred percent. I agree with the high. I, I don't like the high either. So let's dive into other things. Now, as far as the e-commerce go, where do you see our society 
for retail and businesses. Where do you see it going? Because you're in the front line of it. Where do you see that going within the next five years or even two years? What are some of the adjustments that small mom and pop business owners you think they should do to stay relevant and be able to still sustain their business? Yeah, that's a that's a great question. Um, so we track a ton of trends over here. That's why we're able to continue to grow. And definitely the next two, three, four years, the trend is going towards e-commerce. So companies, brick and mortars, small mom and pop stores that do not make that change, that do not make the connection to start selling products on some sort of e-commerce marketplace, whether it's Amazon, eBay, Shopify, their own Amazon or their own storefront something they have to make the switch or they will they will fail I, I could i feel it coming mom and pop stores and these smaller brick and mortar stores they will see their demise if they do not make that change over to e-commerce it's going why to do you think that is because you're thinking everybody wants to just do the shipping and just get out of the house and not drive you think people it's, don't want to drive yeah it's convenience it's convenience you know i can click a button and a lot of these products i can have at my house tomorrow, if not the next day, and sometimes I can even get them delivered today. By the time I get home from work, I don't even have to go to the store. It's sitting on my front step. Like Life is all about convenience, and people are willing to pay for convenience. And plus, it's a one-stop shop. You can get everything on these marketplaces. You don't have to go to three, four different stores, especially if you have kids or you're raising a family. It's challenging to get out and go and go food shopping or grocery shopping or go get a new pair of shoes. It's tough to do that when you have a family. I mean, but what you're saying really makes sense to me. And I don't mean this in a bad way, but you're not like Target, you're not Walmart. My question is, you can give me this information and it makes sense to me. Why are these big stores that don't have consultants like you telling them what the hell they should have done 10 years ago? Why are they being left behind? Because what you just told me, if I'm a small business owner, my, you know what, Eric just told me that that makes sense. It's yes. convenient. I like convenient. But all these big stores, big companies, Fortune 500s, they can't afford you to be their consultant to tell them this shit. Like, it's simple. To me, it's, like, it's not that difficult to comprehend. Yeah, and I 100% I agree with you, and that's the reason why we started Amazon Lit. You froze on me. I don't know. Oh, no. Um, that's the reason why we started Amazon Lit, and now we're seeing clients like that, you know. Uh, we, we haven't gotten any Fortune 500 companies yet, but we're seeing clients with large brick-and-mortar stores, you know, multi-chain brick-and-mortar stores, reach, up to, reach out to us and ask for assistance. How can they get online? How can they expand their business and take, even if it's 10, 15 percent of your sales online, that's a huge amount of additional revenue that you're able to generate. Yeah, to me, it just doesn't make sense. So, okay. How important is it, in your personal opinion, for individuals to have a mentor or a business coach? Because as I talk to more influencers, I'm finding out a common denominator that when individuals don't have a mentor or coach, they're navigating through these complicated times and situations and mm -hmm. platforms without any guidance. Yeah, I think it's imperative. It is crucial to success. The I can I can really. Um, I can really put a majority of my success on, on my mentors, you know, and my business partner as well, who's sitting in the office next to me. Like we had two great mentors who not only taught us about business, but taught us about spiritual principles in life and, and, and meditation and just being more centered. So I think it is imperative. And I wish, I wish I had a mentor six, seven years ago when we started building this business, because we literally would have saved hundreds of thousands of dollars in failures and mistakes and hurdles and trials and tribulations. So much money, it's ridiculous. It would have paid for itself 20 times over. Yeah, I agree, it would have paid for itself. What is your method of self-development? Do you like books? So, what are some of your favorite books? What do you do? Yeah, so for, for books, I listen to Audible almost every day on the way to work. I love listening to uh, motivational speakers. You know, I've been to some Tom, Tony Robbins events. 
Um, I've seen, you know, Russell Brunson, Tom Belayu, all these like, you know, national or really international speakers who when you hear them, they just like you feel it. Like at that Tony Robbins event, I was crying. I was laughing. I was excited. I was nervous. I was sad. All these different emotions. And it was like six hours. I was exhausted afterward. But there was so much personal development in that moment. You know, and there's tons. Literally, I think... I think I would be doing myself a disservice and the people watching a disservice if I told them only to watch specific people because there's so many great motivators out there. It's like try them all. You know, it's not going to it's not going to um, push you back in the wrong direction. It can only move you forward. So there's no bad book. There's no bad motivator. You know, if it touches you a certain way and it helps you stay motivated, then it was worth it even the couple minutes it took to read it or, or learn about it. I agree with that. Eric, how, how could people find you? They can find us at amazonlit.com. That is our website. Or you can find us on Instagram right here, Amazon underscore lit. Our YouTube channel, same thing, Amazon lit. Just type Amazon lit in, in Google and you'll see everything pop up. Uh, we, we love helping other people. It's, the, it's really the foundation of our business. It helps me sleep better at night knowing that I've helped someone else succeed and they can provide for their families. It's just, it's really exciting. It's, it's, it makes us so happy at the end of the day. I want to appreciate you taking this time out of your busy schedule being with us today. Hopefully we'll be able to do more. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, no problem, Vinny. Appreciate your time. Thank you so much. You got it, buddy. Stay safe. Bye-bye. I'll check you. Stay lit.